been such an impressive time uh, for Asian American poetry. And I'm really, really thrilled about that. And one thing I really am adamant about is community building, which I think is very important. Uh is all about that. Uh, so, so I really adhere to that. And for me, personally, it's just such an honor to share the stage with the likes of all the readers here. So, and, and also, granted, these aren't the only Asian American poets who published books in the past year and also in the upcoming years. Uh, Pragita Sharma, Kathy Park Hong also published books. Uh, Lee Herrick. So it's continuing on, and this is what I want. Like I want, I want this momentum, you know. Um, and this is a celebration. It's not just a reading. It's, it's a celebration. So I'm glad that people are, are filling their stomachs, and now hopefully we're gonna fill your hearts as well. That's kind of like. <laughs> The Book of Pregnancy Folklore says that if you accidentally step on a hedgehog while you are pregnant, you'll give birth to a baby and a tiny hedgehog. <laughs> For weeks, I could not shake this image, and I wondered where it could grow. Your hands were only the size of a quarter, and could the animal rest in the center? Would you be pulled onto my chest, clutching your new pet as they swipe the casing from your eyes? We have Meadowsweet dried and bunched above each doorway, and I know when we aren't looking, your tiny hedgehog somehow takes a bite. You've never seen it frost over when it dries, sides mostly smooth, pocked also from the nearly endless tumbling of its life. Arriving during low tide, not wine or beer bottle, no longer one of those clear ones that might have held a model of a Spanish galleon, maybe even of Magellan's when he sailed into the shoals of Mactan before Lapu Lapu's men found him a grave. This little ship holding in history, its sails on the miniature rolled like tiny scrolls, fastened with thread, could just have easily been palimpsest or parchment on which someone had written one message over and again. Love, don't stop looking for me. The same note, long since lost among waves, where time binds one narrative to another, if and then, and then water, undoing all the words ever written. And this next poem is called Kisang, and it's a dramatic monologue in the voice of um, a Kisang who was um, named Huang Jini. And the Kisang were Korean arts women who were actually conscripted by the government. They were kidnapped at a very young age, trained in the arts in order to perform at government events. But they were forbidden from marrying, so they um, ended up, um, in a sense, being second-class second citizens in um, the society, early Joseon um, dynasty. So anyway, this poem is called Kisang. It's in the voice of Huang Jini. And um, the epigraph starting the poem is, I want to understand the joy I felt as I was letting him go. As I listened to the fabric of his jacket, assume the casual shape of leave taking, I learned how to unhinge form from breath and bind and unknot the numinous black, so that again I was a woman and an artist whose ravens fell onto the undul floor like cords, not a suicide's hair floating in a village well and souring the water. Callous on my finger, cushion for the kayabum. We shall pluck the string to forget triumphs before royalty taxing us for a solid and barge. Shall sweep princes' names into a crevice where we store besotted and sudden proposals to suck a jujubee's succulent orb as if we required their directions to resist the stone in which a waiting life will crack a rooting Tendril of song, evening calm. Guide my sense of use across the instrument, transforming my desire for vengeance and a forest heart's smoke from which I fled as a pretty child selected by the king's men. Help me never to forget the elation I felt when my first patron swore by the river's force his love for me, and I understood its swelling to rush and breach could teach me to survive it, 
by emptying myself to play a perfect note. Dear God of blankness, I pray to, dear unerasable, how could I live without you if I were ever given answers? The summer thickens with lostness. Lovers who will not touch each other but look out into space, thinking, I do not belong in the world. News always travels inland, but how can this storm be undone or the treacherous rain unravel or the train arriving one street over and all night long on an island at the end of islands, a forsworn vow, a river blasted through, and another river filled in. Dear afternoon God, dear evening God, my lonely world, the circles of water and wanton violence, dear utterly unmistakable ether, dear lostness, your careless supplicant dropped everything and rakes over me on his way to an implacable place. The dark needs tending. I have a sorrow garden, flowers that grow wilder each night. So begins the letter I write and will not send. I will not give voice or ear to my words. I have no right. Black plums in a wooden bowl, the season's last fruit. August serves sad heat. I study the wind to find its autumn trace. I taste the plums slowly. I did not understand then your last letter. I'm dumb. Oh, I think I'll die from this ache, or worse, live. As a child, I would not eat the skin, but now I want the first sour bite, for it cuts the flesh's sweetness. I line pits along the windowsill, three blue cars, unseen wrens making bright noise of distance, a poem I cannot finish. I think I'll die from this ache. So, um, I have a fascination with reading Chinese folk tales and other folk tales, because it's the most surreal shit of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, go, I just read this one about um, like people are getting baked to be created. Humanity is being created. And of course, the white people are underbaked, black people are overbaked, the Chinese are like right on. <laughs> it so happened that the cook's youngest daughter was an extraordinary beauty, of course. Her obedience was such that the cook and his wife feared nothing good would come of it. So they rubbed dirt on her face and dressed her in sackcloth so she would not attract attention. They told their neighbors that their daughter was stupid, that she could barely talk. So the girl stopped talking, and she was never seen with her hair combed or with her face not covered in a coat of filth. What her parents did not know was that once a month, a girl would steal away from the village, uh, following, wait, going to a remote stream where she would remove her clothes and wash her face. It was on such a day that a student in the village, who lost in an academic haze, had wandered astray <laughs> and lost her baby. It's <laughs> the so right place to in my ear. Like an animal, she stared at him, frozen. They did not move for what felt like 2,000 minutes. <laughs> he had never witnessed such profound beauty. The arch of her eyebrows were like the strokes of a master calligrapher, the felt of a new couch. Her feet were as tight as Chinese tamales. Her skin made him want to invent flying machines. Within minutes, they were rolling in each other's arms with a frantic ardor peculiar to the doomed. 